said Roth here. I was talking to my, my friend uh, uh, a couple of days ago, James Gall. And James said, well, Sid, I walked in heaven. And I said, James, I got to get you on the air. Uh, James Gall, you told me that the, the clarity of, it was a dream, the clarity of walking in heaven was as clear as you used to have when you were one of the prophets in Kansas City of, of that wonderful group that they had gathered together. Uh, it was as clear as thir some 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I said to you, as clear as it was, you haven't seen anything yet. It's, go it's going to be getting way beyond that. But tell me about this dream that you had where you literally, I don't know, can I say literally walked in heaven? You tell me. Well, it's good to be with you again, Sid, and your audience around the world. It's just great to be with you because it really is something supernatural. So I have had, obviously, dreams for many years and visions and visitations and things of this nature. And that's why the whole ministry is called God Encounters, okay? So, but uh, the crispness, the clearness of, of these encounters are absolutely stunning and exhilarating. So I had a dream on a Sunday morning. And in the dream, I am walking in the hallways of heaven. Now, can we say I was in heaven? Normally, I would not say that. Because well, well, what, I, what, uh, Paul Paul said, whether I was in the body or not, I don't know. That's right. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly right. Because there is symbolic only. And then there is more rare, where it is actually happening. For me, I have to put some parentheses around it. It doesn't change the message, though, that it sure felt and seemed actual. But I was in heaven. I was walking in heaven. I was taken into a great hall, and it was a hallway, and my guide was the faceless man. In other words, my guide was the Holy Spirit himself. And he starts walking me, going before me, through this hall of champions of the faith. And I could look at them on this side and on that side, and some of them I recognized by pictures, and some of them my knower knew, and then some of them were people I've known literally in my lifetime. I'm walking down, I'm walking in heaven down the hallway. By the way, you know, the Hebrews chapter 11 talks about the hall of faith. Right. I think I was experiencing this. I'm walking down this hallway of the heroes of faith. Hmm. I saw knew that William and Catherine Booth were, were there. I saw, I saw people who had birthed movements of the Holy Spirit. I saw William Seymour, the one-eyed black preacher from uh, Azusa Street. I saw him in that hallway of heaven. I saw John Wesley, which I come from a Wesleyan background. I saw him. I saw Catherine Kuhlman. Did you I give saw... her my regards? <laughs> well, I didn't, Easy, but yeah. if I see her again, <laughs> I'll think about it. Okay. okay. <laughs> I mean, I was honored, humbled, going like, what's really going on? Uh, but I knew just to keep following my guide, my guide, my leader the Holy Spirit. He's taking me down this hallway, and as I did, they would stand up, and they were applauding. And I'm going, what's going on? And they were communicating 
that they were so glad that there are people today who keep their hand on the plow, don't give up, and that there are new movements of the Holy Spirit getting pioneered. And they, who had started movements, were looking in in this hallway of the champions of faith, and they were going, we're so glad you're carrying on. We're so glad you didn't quit. We're so glad. Keep going. They were cheering me. Hmm. Said they were cheering me not to stop, but to keep, listen to this word. It's going to get really important. Keep moving forward. So I, uh, I keep moving forward. Now my gaze catches someone. This was a person I knew back in Kansas City, who is with the Lord. This man had actually performed the wedding ceremony of my wife and I. Mm -hmm. I learned to prophesy from this man from the charismatic movement. But later in life, he had gotten cross-current with the prophetic movement. And he ended up becoming a persecutor. You know, said, hey, you know a lot of church history, right? Unfortunately, so, history repeats too. <laughs> and, so, uh, and positive and negative. Right. And sometimes the leaders of one move of the Holy Spirit become the resistors or even persecutors of the next move. Is that fair? Yeah, it's fair. Well, did he repent for persecuting you or, or what, what happened? Did well, he applaud? What? Was he applauding? Oh, Sid, it was so riveting. Yeah, I got to give you a background. I released eight declarations for the year 5780 and beyond, the Hebrew year, and 2020 civil calendar and beyond. One of those words was that the Holy Spirit was going to be identifying old hurts and wounds and would be healing them so that we could move forward into the new without yesterday's baggage. Now, I had declared that as one of my eight prophetic words. I'm walking down that hallway. I see this man. His eyes were gleaming. He was smiling. He stands up and he looks right at me and he conveys to me, I am so glad that you didn't quit. I am so glad there are still pioneers who will continue to move forward in the Lord. And so he and I never got to talk, but he did repent. Yes, he did. And we're all saved by grace and by the blood of Jesus. And he was a called man. He did some wrong things, definitely. But in heaven, this whole dimension of like the cost that you pay to pioneer, for me, my encounter, it just erased it. It erased the disappointments. It erased the pain. It erased the like, I don't know, maybe a little bit of like, do I want to pioneer again? Because I know the cost. I've had stones thrown at me before. And I'm walking down this hallway. This man stands. He is happy. He starts applauding. And he looks at me and he goes, thank you that you didn't quit. Thank you. I'm so glad that there are pioneers in the earth today that will keep moving forward. It was exhilarating. And by the way, many people don't know your background. I've known you for many years. I know your background. It would have been when your wife died, yes. when you got attacked with cancer. Huh. Um, it would have been easy for you to say, mm -hmm. well, I did it. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to write some books, and that's it. And I bet those thoughts went through your mind. Of course. Why did, how, did you, how did you persevere like you did? You know, the Bible Jesus talks about that you got to keep your hand on that plow, and you got to keep looking straight ahead. 
he doesn't say that if you don't, you won't be saved, but, but it's like, but you will not be, keep moving forward in the progressive moves of God. And I, like the book of Job, it says, yeah, I swear to my own pain. I forgive. I'll tell you something I really do that's one of the keys to perseverance is I worship the Lord. Hmm. I just worship and I praise him because praise Excuse him. Excuse me. You have to help me now. Yeah, okay. How do you worship? Well, you're a singer. Uh, yeah. Okay, how does someone like me that's not a singer do what you do? Tell me. Okay, come on. Sac praise is always a sacrifice. We don't praise always because we feel like it. We praise by an act of our will. We offer up a sacrifice. That's why it's so pleasing to God. Huh. But I tell you, once you do it, you will feel like doing it. Because you get well, that's good. That's a good title for a book. <laughs> and you know what? I was tempted because I have so much teaching knowledge that I could have gone another 10 years on what I already know. And that would have been so boring for me. You know, I feel the same way, James. Uh, I, I feel like I'm ready for the new. That's the right. old was fine, but it wasn't fine compared to what I read in that Bible. And I'm not going to be satisfied till I see at least the miracles Jesus did and then what he prophesied even greater. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, in the book of John, the greater works generation. How about this? Bob Jones prophesied that before the coming of Jesus, that there would be the joining of Moses, miracles, and with the joining of Acts, the book of Acts, miracles. There would be the joining of the miracles of Moses and the miracles of the first century church would come together. I believe that is exactly where we're headed. And I as well, I'm walking down that hall of faith. There was a miracle worker, Catherine Kuhlman. She was excited about what was coming. Did she tell you? She didn't, but later, later in this experience, I was spoken to about this, but everybody there, they were just, it was the great cloud of witnesses and they were so engaged that we get to finish their work. So mm -hmm. I'm walking down the hallway of heaven. I see this man who had persecuted. He looks at me and he gives me his it's like approval, blessing, favor. It was gratitude. And it was so amazing. Now I continue. The faceless guide, he just keeps going. And he brings me to this huge auditorium. Now, when Michael Ann passed away, I was given a book called uh, Beyond the Gates, which was originally written in around the, like the 1880s by Rebecca Springer that uh, has had multiple titles. In that book, in her journeys in heaven, she talked about that there would be halls in heaven, that if you missed some understanding in the earth, you could go hear John Wesley preach, hmm. or you could go catch up, and you could uh, be in the room where miracles, but you loved God, but you were a cessationist, and you could Catch up because you get renewed. That's what I encountered. Everybody in heaven was all, I mean, we know that everybody was on the same page. So we keep walking. So I had read about this, these rooms in heaven, but I hadn't experienced this. Then I'm taken into this grand, grand, huge room where thousands of believers were. I'm standing at the back. And up on the stage, the people that were per permitted to speak on these platforms were people that had a testimony. They were an overcomer. And I saw, I'm standing in the back, and I see a woman 
walk off the stage and she had just shared her testimony. And people were standing and giving honor to whom honor is due. And they were worshiping God with gratitude. And do you know who it was that I saw walk off the stage? No. My late wife, Michael Ann Gall. I was going to ask you, did you see her? But I just didn't want to. So I'm so glad you did. Sid, it was stunning. I saw her walking off the stage. She had just presented her testimony about women in ministry and women in leadership because in the earth realm a lot of people didn't believe it believe in it and we had some stones cast at us on that one but they she just shared her narrative her testimony of becoming empowered by the holy spirit to be a woman in ministry and a woman in leadership and she walks off the stage and people are applauding and it was, you know, something that was actually really personal about this. This happened right on what would have been our wedding anniversary. Hmm. And heaven knows I walked in heaven. And then I am told about the future, but I'm in heaven that I could be invited someday, not now not for 20 years, I could be invited into that auditorium and I was given a word what my assignment would be, moving forward no matter the cost. Hmm. I was told that heaven knew and that I was going to be growing in a testimony on this side to be a model for this generation on how to keep moving forward no matter the cost. It was incredible. I wake up out of this assignment knowing moving forward no matter the cost. But do you know how I woke up? No. Yeah. Because the voice of the Lord came. And in dreams like this, for me, it isn't just that still quiet internal voice. It is the external audible. I'm talking about the external audible voice came into my bedroom. And I wake up hearing the voice of our Father God speaking. Would you like to know what I heard? Yes. <laughs> This is what we're waiting on for this particular broadcast. I heard this. As I came out of that exhilarating dream, I heard, Welcome to the era of favor. Welcome to the era of favor that those who have sowed in tears will reap in joy. But here is, here's the final word I heard. Welcome to the beginning of the great harvest. Mm. And now, now let's go back to the prophecy that I, I heard so many times of Bob Jones. Of, I, but you heard it more than me. Tell me exactly what you remember he said was coming. Yeah, you know, sometimes again, people misinterpret a word and then end up in a misapplication. But I heard multiple times about the billion soul harvest, especially of youth. That's what I remember him saying too. Over and over I heard it. There will be a billion soul, the great harvest, a billion soul harvest, especially of youth. Now, when he first started talking about this years ago, around 1983, I believe, he gave three signs that would happen to people to know that this is going to begin. You, would you like to hear a little about that? Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> the way I remember and the way I have rehearsed this with people who were present, there are three things. Bob said that one of the signs would be that in the United States, 
that homosexuality would be legalized and same-sex marriage would be approved. That could never happen in the U.S. Yeah, well, that was 1983. I, what I'm saying is in 83, that's what people thought. But listen to the next one. It is more off the wall. He said there will be a pill perfected to create an abortion by a pill. Mm. He even knew where it would come from. And he said, there will be a pill that will perfect abortion. And everybody thought he was really off his rocker. Right. Some even turned to him and wondered, said, Bob, do you know what an abortion is? <laughs> This is 1983, and then, of course, we have this day-after pill that has come into being. Now, that's not a good sign. No. But there are signs, because it gets dark before it gets bright, and you want to hear what the third one is? And yeah. it's absolutely stunning. He said that there would be people in China watching 24-7, 365 worship on unplugged television sets on their wrist. You mean something like this. <laughs> and something like this. Uh-huh. A smart watch. The words he used were crazy. He said, there will be workers in the rice fields in China who will be watching unplugged television sets on their wrist. I mean, I wonder how in the world he even got those words to describe something like this. Yeah. That he our, our entire network is on the wrist all over the world now. So, the cell phone. <laughs> so right now, I want to encourage people, you watching this right now, is a fulfillment of a prophetic word that we are shifting in now into the beginning of the greatest harvest we have ever known. I just walked in heaven. I just walked in heaven, and heaven gave me a word, and it was about moving forward, no matter the cost. Welcome to the era of favor. Welcome to the error when there is sowing and reaping, and those who have sowed in tears will reap with joy. But the clincher, welcome. I got to get this exact. I've written it down. Welcome to the beginning of the great harvest. I am here to be another person, not an echo, but a voice in our generation. And I want the viewers to know this. You're sowing in tears, and everything you have endured, misunderstanding, rejection, maybe a spouse that didn't understand, maybe cross-current in a move of God, I want you to know, God knows, God sees, God remembers, and He is rewarding you now. And I want to encourage your faith that we are transitioning from one whole era into a new era. And when this Pentecost happens, we've talked about this before, this is going to be a great, new, fresh Pentecost of where it is a baptism of spirit and a baptism of fire. I speak this baptism of spirit and a baptism of fire upon these believers in the name of Jesus. I speak that with this comes greater works. I speak that with this fire of God comes instantaneous creative miracles by the fire of God. I see the fire following on people right now. I see, I don't know how, I see people in Indonesia catching fire fire. I see a, a, another like a mighty wind, but this time it's like a mighty fire. I see a fire of the Lord, a baptism of spirit and fire. And I want to say to those who have grown weary 
in well-doing. I want you to know God remembers how you have sowed in tears, and there's a promise from heaven for you. You are going to reap with joy. It's not just a billion soul harvest, and that would have been more than enough. That's it's right. a harvest of what you have sown. Get that. It's the harvest of everything you have sown coming back, yes. pressed down, good measure, overflowing. I'm, I'm going to tell you, God gave me a word yes, that sir. ties in just a little bit. And here's the phrase. Uh, I've never heard this before. Let God be God. Mm -hmm. Stop worry. Mm -hmm. Stop living in the past. Ugh. Get ready for the beginning. It's a, it's this is a trite phrase, but it's true. It's true. This is the first day of the rest of your life. Do not look back. Do not be Lot's wife. Yes. There's look for the new. The old was fine. But the old right. is stale manna now. That's Look right. For the new, because it's yours. And if you are depressed, worried, in fear, don't know what you're going to do next, that's the word for you. Let God be God. James, one more word from you. Okay, when I came out of that dream and I hear these words, the Holy Spirit started talking to me. And he said, you've been really good at casting the macro vision, the big vision. But he challenged me. He said, you're not just supposed to proclaim it. You're supposed to be in the middle of it. And I want to make every great macro vision a micro vision for every individual person. So I speak into the macro vision of the glory of the Lord are going to cover the earth as the waters covers the seas. I speak to the big vision of the great harvest. And I say, you are not forgotten, but you are chosen for such a time as this. And as a matter of fact, two things I want to pray. I want to pray first that you have experiential knowledge of God. The head knowledge, that's the first step. The saying a prayer after someone and going to a nice church, that's just that I'm putting your, your feet in the water. The whole purpose of your walk with the Messiah is for not for me or James to have experiential knowledge, but for you to have experiential right. knowledge. I want to pray a prayer. I want you to mean it to the best of your ability. I want you to pray this out loud right after me. Please repeat. Dear God, I'm a sinner against you and you alone have I sinned. And I'm so sorry. I believe the blood of Jesus washes away my sins and I am clean. And now that I am clean, I ask Jesus to not just be my savior, but be my Lord wherever it takes me. Lord Jesus, Come inside. Yes, Give me the experience I need with you. Yes, sir. And I refuse to look back. Mm -hmm. I am excited mm -hmm. about the great harvest that has begun in my life mm -hmm. and for the world. Yes, and now, James, I want you to lift holy hands to God. And I am lifting holy hands to God. And I'm going to start the prayer and I want you to end it for the greater glory, the global glory to come upon these people that are watching, viewing right now, miracles to tra tra transpire, hips to be healed, backs to be healed, necks to be healed, ears open, not just in the natural, but in the supernatural. I pray 
that the glory that has been prophesied by Bob Jones in heaven, so many of the saints, they were not here to see it, but they're watching right now, according to James, what he saw, and according to the book of Hebrews, they are watching right now. I pray, oh God, that that glory come upon each person and that we walk in instant repentance, mm. instant love, instant forgiveness. More, Lord. Yes, Lord. More of the glory than we've ever experienced in healing, physical healing, blood diseases from the top of our head to the bottom of our toes, blood pressure, mm -hmm. normal mm -hmm. in Yeshua. That's Jesus' name. Amen. And I just see someone's like their sinuses are actually draining right now. And you're actually experiencing like just, you know, dripping. Well, you just got delivered of allergies. And I take authority over any spirit that is behind allergies. And we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And I see right now a mass deliverance happening from the spirit of fear. And we say no because God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. So we take authority over that panic attack. I say no to the panic attack that has been coming against people. Someone's been ha just uh, had one, even at, like, like last night, uh, right around three o'clock in the morning, and then you're just restless. So I say, peace be still to your heart, but we shut the door on the spirit of fear. And I just say that no more nightmares either in the name of Jesus. No intrusions of the demonic realm in the night season. Somebody that people are getting delivered of depression right now. I see the helmet of hope, of salvation being put upon people. Hope is the positive expectation of good. And I just speak chemical healings. I speak chemical healings and over depression in the name of Jesus. We cast off the spirit of fainting. We cast off the garment of heaviness and we put on the garment of praise. So we praise you, Lord. We thank you, God. We love you, Lord of hosts. Now I speak over your lives and I say over to you, you are here for such a time as this. And I speak over Egypt. There will be the greatest move of God that the nation of Egypt has ever known. I say to the descendants of Hagar, you are not forsaken. I say that there will be a great turning. There will be a great mystery. It will be a part of what is going to make the Jewish people jealous is even because of a move of God in part that's going to happen in Egypt in the name of Jesus. So I just speak that and I just release that. And I declare that we are transitioning into the new. We thank God for the past, but we shift into the era. And I say to you what heaven said to me, welcome to the era of favor. Welcome to the new beginning of the great harvest for such a time as this. God bless you. Who knows if you've not been called to the kingdom for such a time as this. Amen. Well, <laughs>